Good evening and you're watching the recap of the day on Las Vision TV with Leva Orujova. President of Azerbaijan Ilham Aliyev signed an order announcing extraordinary presidential election in Azerbaijan on the 11th of April. The Central Election Commission of Azerbaijan has been instructed to hold the presidential election in accordance with the Electoral Code. Aydin Mirzazadeh, the head of the Department of Political Analysis and Forecasting of the ruling New Azerbaijan Party, said that Azerbaijan has brought forward the date of the elections to April the 11th in regard with several important public events which will be held throughout the year. Azerbaijani society will be able to hold both presidential elections and other events at a high level by bringing forward the date of the elections to the 11th of April, says Aydin Mirzazadeh, the head of the Department of Political Analysis and Forecasting of the ruling near Azerbaijan party. This year, Azerbaijan will celebrate the 100th anniversary of the establishment of the Azerbaijani parliament and the armed forces and the adoption of the state flag of Azerbaijan. If we held the presidential elections in October in accordance with the constitutions, our entire society would have to be split into several directions and not focus on these important events. The current situation allows celebrating the 100th anniversary of Azerbaijan Democratic Republic at a level it deserves. Moreover, we will be celebrating the 100th anniversary of our democracy under the leadership, new programs and new targets of our would-be president, Mirzazadeh explained. Note that the 11th of April is announced a non-working day in the country. President of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, has received a delegation of international and foreign trade unions participating in the 5th Congress of the Azerbaijan Trade Unions Confederation. Note that President Aliyev sent a letter of congratulation, which was read out to the participants of the Congress as it kicked off early in the morning. Armenian armed forces have violated a ceasefire along the contact line between the Azerbaijani and Armenian troops 116 times throughout the day, reports the press service of the Ministry of Defense of Azerbaijan. The OSCE is expected to monitor the contact line between Azerbaijani and Armenian troops on the 6th of February, reports the Ministry of Defense of Azerbaijan. The monitoring will be held under the mandate of the OSCE chairperson in office, personal representative near Azerbaijan's Tatar district. The United States of America is interested in the peaceful resolution of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, U.S. Ambassador to Azerbaijan Robert Sekuta said during his meeting with the IDPs at Masasir Settlement. The U.S. government continues to work towards the settlement of the conflict. Ambassador Sekuta also said that he had held several meetings with the IDPs living in different regions of Azerbaijan during his diplomatic career in the country. Military cooperation remains a priority for Pakistan and Azerbaijan, said Saeed Khan Mohmand, ambassador of Pakistan to Azerbaijan, at the event hosted by the Embassy of Pakistan in Baku to mark Kashmir Solidarity Day. To us, the Nagorno-Karabakh problem is the same as the Kashmir issue. Azerbaijan is suffering from it and we will continue providing our support, added the ambassador. Azerbaijan's Chamber of Accounts will establish a special educational center to increase the potential capacity of human resources, Nasir Sadegov, director of the Legal Services and Personnel Department of the Chamber, said in Baku at a public hearing on the new edition of the law in Chamber of Accounts. The new draft law determines the status of the Chamber of Accounts, which wasn't considered in the previous version of the law. Moreover, the new version of the law allows the Chamber of Accounts to expand the coverage of financial and budgetary supervision and facilitates access to information necessary for oversight activities. New methods for conducting audit oversight are also outlined in the draft law. Baku has enough capacity to host a free trade zone, said Juan Torrens, president of the World Free and Special Economic Zones Federation. Building a free trade zone requires preparing a professional pre-project, designing and implementing it phase by phase and ensuring a good management model to be able to optimize major benefits, not only taxes or customs, but economies of scale, says Juan Torrens, president of the World Free and Special Economic Zones Federation. Baku as a capital has enough market to establish an FTZ, but it is important to estimate the dimensions of the market, he said. Further, Torrance noted that creation of FTZ is the best way to attract foreign direct investments. They offer infrastructures, incentives, services. They are facilitators to foreign companies but can be used also for local industries involved in international trade, he explained. 
President of Azerbaijan Ilham Aliyev signed a decree on March 17, 2016 on measures to create a free trade zone type special economic area covering the territory of the Baku International Sea Trade Port in the Alat Township of Baku, Karadağ District. The FTZ is expected to bring up to $1 billion just in the first few years. Special tax and customs policy, which will be pursued in the territory of the free trade zone, will also stipulate for the development and simplification of a number of procedures. Nahid Bagirov, chairman of Azerbaijan Tourism Association, says we should expect more tourists from Iran during the Novruz holidays. More tourists are expected to come from Iran during Novruz celebrations. Compatriots living in Iran prefer to come to Azerbaijan during holidays. Therefore, hotels are almost fully booked for those dates. We will greet them with various concerts and events. Iranian singers will also perform at these celebrations. Azerbaijan's Gabala is among four bidders for the Islamic Tourism Prize of the Organization for Islamic Cooperation. OIC Assistant Secretary General for Economic Affairs Ambassador Hamid Opelero pointed out that the 10th Islamic Ministerial Conference on Tourism will announce two recipient cities of the OIC Islamic Tourism Prize for 2019 and 2020 respectively. Moscow is witnessing freezing rain and heavy snow blanketing the city with 43 centimeters of snow within 24 hours. According to the Meteorological Service, it is the heaviest day of snowfall to hit the Russian capital since the country's weather records began. While causing massive power outages, transportation delays and dangerous conditions, the snow made the city dwellers overjoyed as well. We would like to ask our Moscovite friends to throw a couple of snowballs our way as well. And that was all for today. Thank you for watching and come back tomorrow for more.